So after the intense Mars Rahu transit, I see in drigpanchang.com, Mars has entered the sign of Taurus and he's going to stay there for some time, quite some time. <laughs> so from 10th of August to 16th of October, he will be in the sign of Taurus. Then he's entering Gemini and then he's again entering back to Taurus on 13th of November, right? Hmm, interesting. It's a retrogression, right? Quite a precarious uh, retrogression because this retrogression will come uh, after, you know, the mars Rahu conjunction, right? Of course, uh, we will discuss more on this uh, retrogression later. Today's video is on uh, the transit of Mars alone, not Mars Rahu, <laughs> in the sign of Taurus. So, you have to understand what, what is the sign of Taurus. The sign of Taurus is a very interesting sign because the sign of Taurus shows resources and abundance, right? Now, it does not literally show external abundance. It doesn't show that. But it can, to some extent, show the abundance mentality, abundance mindset, okay? That is something which uh, this uh, the sign of Taurus can show, right? So, therefore... <clears throat> When Mars is in Aries and then he goes to Taurus. So what happens when a planet goes from Aries to Taurus? So in Aries, what happens is there are new beginnings. So it's like a newborn baby, right? But the thing is, uh, a newborn baby cannot survive by himself, right? He has to be taken care of by his mother, father, or anybody. <laughs> Second house shows second house also shows you know family values that uh, are inculcated into somebody second house shows uh, our thought process right because second house also shows our childhood second house shows uh, the values that is put inside us not through our parents only but parents friends family everybody right so therefore the second house is a very interesting house because the second house tells us that now we are more concerned about living rather than existing, right? The first house tells us that we have to first exist, right? So that's why it's the body, it's the health, which um, the, the first duty that we have is to take care of our body, right? Why? Because that will help us to exist. But is life only about taking care of the body and not of anything else? Well, not necessarily, right? So, the second house tells us that it's not worth simply existing. You should also live, right? So, that, that transition from existing to living, that transition from survival to value systems is the sign of Taurus. That is why it is a very good sign because any planet that is in the sign of Taurus can show our desire to not just exist or it can show our desire to live basically. We want to live, not just exist, right? Because there are many people who exist, but they don't live, right? So existence is our first duty, but that's not the end goal of life, right? Because when you, when you only want to exist, uh, we become animalistic because animal life is characterized by existing, right? Now, I'm not saying that animals are not living, but as per the scriptures, animal life is primarily based on instincts and survival, right? So if you see a bird or, you know, you, you see a monkey, a cat or a dog, you know, what is, what is their primary focus in life? It's like, when will I get the next meal, right? Why? Because... It's very competitive in the animal world, right? There is also competition in the human society. Uh, quite a serious competition, but it's a more refined version of competition. You know, it's like you have entrance exam. It's, it's like intellectual uh, pursuit, right? It's not that, uh, at least nowadays, it, it, it is not that, you know, you have to uh, fight and kill other people, you know, to get your food, right? Now, of course, there are people who do that, but I'm not talking of 
criminals here, right? I'm talking of people in general. Of course, uh, people who have been living in forests or you know in some other dangerous places, they even till date they might like you know hunt do hunting and you know like uh, get their food. But generally, uh, that's not how uh, humans behave. You know, it's like uh, much more refined than animals, right? <clears throat> so therefore. When Mars enters the sign of Taurus, uh, it, it is a very good time for us to see the houses that Mars rules in our chart. What can we do? What can we do within our life to not just exist, but to start living related to those houses, right? So, for example, if Mars is your Lagna Lord, right, then Mars shows you know, your body, your physique, right? It shows your entire existence, your Aries or Scorpio. So then what happens? So for you, it is, it's like a dire situation to live and not just exist, right? Because the sign of Taurus has uh, the blessings of Lord Shiva associated with it. So if a planet is in the sign of Taurus, it shows that you might have done something, you might have given some donations, you might have given, had some contributions to anybody because of which you are entitled, not literally, but as from a karmic perspective, you are entitled to get something. I'm not saying that you should feel entitled, but I'm saying that it is possible that you have abundance in that area of life, right? Of course, subject to the horoscope. Right, because many people will say, Oh, I have Venus in Taurus, but I have no relationships, right? Well, maybe, but what if what if Venus is your sixth lord, right? So then or it could also mean an acute search for abundance. It can also mean that we are hell bent on trying to get gain abundance to trying to get things, but it's not happening, it's not working the way we want, right? So it can show that our desire for abundance is not getting fulfilled, especially if a planet is under the aspect of Saturn because what Saturn does is Saturn says that whatever you want, you are not qualified now. Later, you can claim that, right? So that is what uh, Saturn represents. So when a planet is in Taurus, aspected by Saturn, it's like, Saturn is telling the planet, you are not abundant, you are not abundant, you are not abundant, right? Saturn represents anything which is not, right? Actually, that's more like Rahu, but Saturn is denial, delay, disappointment, setbacks, right? Rahu represents shocks, right? <clears throat> so if a planet is in Taurus, but with Rahu, so imagine Rahu is in Taurus, and then there's another planet there. So you might be shocked, to get so much abundance or to be deprived of so much abundance, right? So either ways it can happen. So therefore, the moon gets exalted in Taurus. Why? Because imagine the mind. The mind does not want to exist. I mean, it wants, but the mind also wants to live, right? So <clears throat> all the famous quotes about humanity, about love and all this always start with you know living right like you see you know live and let live right it's a very very famous quote so it doesn't say exist and let others exist <laughs> it says live and let live right why because living means to experience the world to experience our karma to experience ourselves right to experience god uh, spirituality at a higher level so Planet in Taurus is sometimes hell-bent on uh, living at the experience. So that is why sometimes it can be very tamasic also, right? So uh, sometimes it can happen that, you know, your eighth lord is in Taurus and uh, you indulge too much in drugs, you know, alcohol or, you know, the opposite sex. And why do you do that? Because you want to feel abandoned in that area of life, but somehow... Because of your horoscope, due to some other placements or aspects, you don't end up feeling abundant, right? So imagine a precarious scenario if your uh, Venus in your birth chart is aspected by Saturn, right? But your seventh lord is uh, sitting in the sign of Taurus in your birth chart. So now your seventh lord is in Taurus. So you want abundance in relationships, in your marriage. But now, the Karaka for marriage, which is Venus, which is, uh, it, it is actually under the aspect of 
Saturn, right? So then that shows that your ability to love, romance, and experience conjugal bliss is uh, is under threat, right? So therefore, do not just see one planet. Do not just see Taurus. Do not just see Venus. Do not just see Moon. Don't just see Saturn. Don't just see Rahu. Now see what is going on. Which planets are in trines to Taurus, right? Virgo and Capricorn are the trinal signs to Taurus. The other art signs, right? So they they will they can sometimes help Venus to gain more abundance, right? Venus or the planet in Taurus, they, they can help them to get more abundance, you know, more resources, more help from people, more help from society, all right? So therefore, um, to be precise, uh, see what Venus, uh, see what Mars rules in your horoscope. Mars rules two houses. And depending on that, you have to decide how can you not just exist? You exist, but also along with that, how can you start living the life that you really want, right? Thank you very much for your patience. If you're new, then please subscribe first. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your family, friends and relatives and colleagues and astro enthusiasts, most importantly. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.